As your lawn. Uh, all you other hosts is boring, hella yawn. Mm. All you other hosts is corny, hella wrong. No, I ain't trying to boast, but Craigie is the toast. Double shots in the vase, giving flowers while we woke, whoa. And that's smoke, and that's smoke, beady. And there we have it. Just a young man with a plan and a brand. Talking to dogs, going through the fog, and creeping through the smog. Finding himself on the side of a mountain. Only cash is counting. And that's Craigie, y'all. It's time to get black, y'all. Maceo! Brandon! Misbehaving. Wait a minute. Hold. Oh, it's my foot. <sighs> I didn't even try to do that. Oh, damn. Almost didn't see you there. You caught me in my element. Taking the gifts of this mountainous clay and turning it into a masterpiece is no easy chore. Although I'd say I was doing a pretty damn good job. Ceramics is just one of the many hidden talents I have in common with our subjects this episode. We'll also get into a short film as well as learn more about a sister encouraging our people to live active lives by getting out of their comfort zones and into the wild. But before any of that, Let's check out a ceramicist who's given old Clay Hands Craig a run for his money. Your attention, please. Meet Christina Batiste. Imagine a little bit the purity of form, the simplicity. Of My name is Christina Batiste. I am a potter.
Morning coffee is a ritual. It's a present I get every single day from my husband. We go and sit and look out the window and talk over, you know, what we're going to do that day, drink this amazing coffee. We pick out mugs that will be the mug menu of the day. We drink out of handmade cups of, of mine or of other potters and really have a nice interaction with handmade pottery first thing in the morning. We have this little table and these whiteboard pens that as we're having coffee, you can kind of sketch along with your conversation. I might sketch that idea and kind of just illustrate on this whiteboard that gives a very ephemeral quality and that gives you the freedom to just try something out. Right, you can use words, you can use different colors, you can use different shapes, and it really, it's a nice way to start the day with, with possibility. In some ways, working with clay is, is very much a partnership. This pound of clay that I'm going to sit down and work with is, is a partner in what I'm doing. And so I get to meet that material where it is. I get to think about what it, what it might become and connect to that part of the earth. I like about pottery that, that we're working with this this material that's very it's very elemental just a very raw and natural quality When you first sit down at the wheel, the thing that, that gets me every time that I absolutely love is there's a sense of possibility. Making a form again and again and again allows me to edit and refine that form. Pottery allows me time and space to be really present. Be in the moment using my, my hands and observing what the clay is doing. Being able to sit down and have that feeling of possibility is one of the most seductive parts of pottery. All of it is, is in the future. All of it has this, this potential to it that is just one of the most lovely feelings in the world. Form is important to me because I like to limit the vocabulary that I'm using. I'm very interested in quite subtle variations of a cylinder or of a circle. I'm interested in the edge. I'm interested in the foot. I'm working in the minimalist tradition of art. Clay is the way that I interact with the world. I feel like I'm just chasing cave painters.
The pieces that I've made in conversation with the Black Lives Matter movement and the reckoning that we're having, the pendants and the mugs with the three-line element that is making a statement of Black Lives Matter, I wanted those to be a wearable Black Lives Matter sign, something that you can take out into the world and express. A way of being an activist as a Black artist, as a Black potter. I feel that you can't fully experience a piece of pottery until you have used it. You can't really experience that cup and understand it until you've used it. Showing the beauty of decorative and sculptural pieces of unglazed clay has the elegance that I want it to have. It becomes all the more powerful, all the more striking. Well, damn. Christina is like really, really good. Makes my little stuff look like crap. Makes my little stuff look like straight dookie balls. I hate my stuff now. I hate it, I hate it. Why you gotta be so good, Christina? Why? 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 Now this next piece is more in the wheelhouse of Craig, film. Because naturally, I am an actor, producer, and have been known to write and direct from time to time. And that's exactly what my boy Casiano has been up to the last few months, pinning and directing an original film for our viewing pleasure. And I can't lie, I've been waiting on this one. And it's not because he's from the crib, Chicago. Okay, I'm lying, it's because he's from the shy. We gotta build each other up so no one else can break us down, you dig? Let's not waste any more time. Your attention, please. A short film from Casiano Hamer. No, no, I said no, I said no. I'm not gonna say it again. It doesn't matter that you said no. I'm gonna see her. Come on, Yolanda, come on. We already talked about this. No, you said we that we would see her. We talked about this. You said we would see her this month. Just not now. Oh, not right now? Okay, then when? We gotta be careful about how this, this woman talks around him. Whatever, man, whatever. Stop. I am going. Stop. Stop it, Yolanda. What are you doing? What are you doing? Tell me what you're doing right now. <laughs> what are you doing? Seriously, you you just, you don't want me to see her. That's it. You don't want me to see her. You want me to just let her go. Stop it. God knows how. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Give it all. Digo que si todos ustedes en la tierra se ponen de acuerdo en cuanto a cualquier cosa que piden, 
le será hecho por mi Padre, que está en los cielos. Porque cuando dos o tres están reunidos en mi nombre, allí estoy yo en medio de ellos. Pop keeps blowing on my phone. I won't say nothing, but my is back. Escucha. You recognize this? He takes us to City Baptist every Sunday to hear this. No te digo hasta siete, sino hasta setenta veces siete. Como digo, did you understand that? And that's my fault. No, I mean, I, just, I said I'll practice more. I just, you know, I, I got to catch up on my AP Lit and... Imagine being the only one in your house who speaks Spanish, hmm? You took all the stuff in school with writing. You were smart. It's been too long, too long. I finally let you off your leash this time, huh? <laughs> Hi, stranger. Hi, Caroline. It's Tia. It's okay. First time out here? Yeah, um, I mean, it's real quiet, but it's nice though. Let me help you with those. Oh, yeah, I mean, I got this. Come on, come on. I, I got a surprise. I can't wait to take you guys. Come on. your help, Maggie. Oh, I got your back. I mean, I haven't seen him. This is my first time getting to know them. I, got I haven't seen back. my sister in so back. long. Come on, breathe. They came all the way up from the city, all the way out here to hang out with me. And it's gonna be fine. You think so? I know so. Wanted you guys to finally see what I've been up to. Maggie and I took over this place and it was a dump, but we made magic out of it. This one here is my favorite. Say hi to Shay. She's a sweetheart. Mm. Bit of a drama queen. She's still a teenager, you know? He's just trying to out tough you right now. Come on, give him some love. Come on. Come on. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, want, I don't, want, I don't want to, you know, get my hands dirty. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right on the subways in Give New York City. You don't want to get your hands dirty on this forest? I'm sorry. Give him some love, Alonzo. She's not a crowd pleaser. She's got heart. Sometimes you can feel something in them. Oh, this boy here, he's got an energy to him. <laughs> He'll be here whenever you want. <laughs> there you go.
Your mommy used to hate this. <laughs> My mother used to have to sit down and watch her eat it to make sure she finished it. Your mommy used to give us a hard time. No. No, <laughs> mommy used to have it out for me. Eventually, she loved it, though. Started licking your fingers like a crazy person. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Try some ensalada de berros. It's good for you. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me baby. He's so smart, you have no idea. He's actually um he's captain of his uh debate team. Oh. Mm -hmm. We we just finished up a debate. You know, I I was talking about reparations for African Americans and, uh, you know, as, as far as slavery goes and the socioeconomic effects um, that would have. And they have you debate on both sides, affirmative and negative, so it's evened out. And, and you get to learn more about the topic from debating from the other mm -hmm. side. Have you ever done a debate about Cuba? You do know why we left Cuba, right? Like, Manita, we don't have to yeah, talk I about mean, that now. No, 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 I'm serious, know, yeah. though. For real? No, yeah, he knows already. Pe people on our block, people we've known our whole lives, trying to make us drink that Castro Kool-Aid. And they took everything from us just because we said no. We lost everything. We couldn't walk down the street and say whatever we wanted. We couldn't say, oh, we don't like Castro. The minute you say you don't like Castro, you're in jail. You, you know, he doesn't know our struggle? Carolina, that's not what he's talking to you about. We don't have to discuss, like, you don't have to bring everything back to the revolution and Cuba and all of that. Well, at least we can talk about it. We get to speak for ourselves. Women, like, your mommy and I, that's not something you could just do. We don't take that lightly, oíste? Mm -hmm. And this is delicious, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really good. Listen to what I'm saying, all right? Just stop getting your feelings involved and just listen to me. Do you understand how she feels about men that look like me and like you? You know, you know how she felt about your mother and I getting together. Yeah, I, I remember, yeah. So you know this ain't no bygones be bygones crap. Listen, I love your mother, all right? She has to do what she has to do, but I want you to keep your eyes open. You know what I'm saying? Papi, I... I've seen how she is with, with mommy, and I know how you feel about her and all, but from what I can see, maybe things are different. You know what, son? Here's what you do. You call me when you know they haven't changed. Because I guarantee you they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen you in how long? We gotta make up for lost time. Veda? Un poquito. Un poquito. Un poquito. Un ching. 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 Ah. Ma. It's been too long. Right? <laughs> it has been. And this feels so nice. Right? Yeah. Ven, dami. Este con la cara siempre. But he's enjoying himself too. Okay, I guess you know how to read him. No, no, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you, though. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, thank you, though. <laughs>
Mm. How you speak reminds me of those college kids that come up here every winter, yeah. <laughs> Some you pen smart Alex. We, we got the ski lodge out here that they love. <laughs> Some of them handsome too, like you. Dark sports guys, I think. Listen yeah. to what I'm saying. This woman has issues. The way they talk. Like you. I think you'd like them. She's a problem. Real smart guys. Good guys. They like them blondes, though. Huh? You don't remember what she said about us? <laughs> I was shocked. They got black people in you pen? <laughs> Come on. You know I'm joking, right? What's your story? Who are you scoring? I'm trying to protect you from what's coming. I bet you like them, too. When I was your age, I got myself into all kinds of stuff. Drank, snuck into some strip clubs. A man's got needs. <sighs> Ask your puffy. You think it's changed? Ask him about his bachelor party. <laughs> but I guarantee you, it has. I don't think that he's ready to have that conversation. I got an email from the school that my paper is due tomorrow and I left my books at home. We gotta go. Till next time, Sabrina. Till next time. Just when I got it together, yo yo. And we'll be back. Thanksgiving, maybe? I did okay, no? That's what you're gonna tell Malcolm, okay? Tell him that he raised a beautiful boy in East I quiero Carolina.
Hey, yo, Cassiano, you did that, boy. You did that. Making a shot proud, young blood. Keep climbing. Speaking of climbing, I thought it'd be a good idea to get in the spirit of our last segment by getting a little mountain climbing workout in. Hashtag things I quickly regret, but I'm gonna tough it out. I got this, I am strong, I am able, I am willing, I am crazy for thinking I could do this. Okay, so our last story is one of resiliency, focus, and thinking outside the stereotypes and social norms of what black people consider fun hobbies. She skydives barefoot and is a hike master, to name a few. She gives new meaning to, we out here. Well, I'm gonna stop trying to be free solo and get my hind parts back inside the mountain, so check out our next story. Your attention, please. Meet Danielle Williams. Is anybody out there? Brandon? Is anybody out there? What I'm gonna do up here alone? Look at me trying to be world, be free solo. I should have stuck to hopes. Got me out here looking like a black bald eagle. And I ain't even bald. Or a damn eagle. Who am I talking to? In skydiving, we come from different walks of life. There's something that called us here. Skydiving is definitely about living in the moment, and there's a beauty and simplicity to that, because at the end of every jump, you have to save your own life. My name is Danielle Williams. I am the founder of Melanin Base Camp, which is an advocacy group where we talk about diversity in outdoor adventure sports. And I'm also the co-founder of Team Black Star Skydivers, which is an extremely passionate organization of diverse skydivers from around the world. Before I knew about skydiving or anything outdoorsy, I knew that I was going to join the Army. I grew up in a military family. My dad was a third generation military veteran. It's just something that has been a part of our personal story. I had returned from a combat deployment in Iraq and I was trying to chase that feeling that you have when you are deployed in a combat environment. I decided that I was gonna do a tandem skydive. I was completely nervous. We had an amazing jump. It was nothing like I thought it would be, just very relaxing, a lot of wind in your face. But then the parachute opens and it's just very calm. And it's just an incredibly breathtaking visual. Woo! I knew that I want to do this again and again and again. And that's when I decided that I was going to become a skydiver. African Americans have been in skydiving since the very beginning. And the fact that there was not great record keeping of our contributions to the sport, we saw that as, hey, maybe we can change that by forming Team Black Star, by literally forming a black star in the sky. We have a very diverse community of 330 skydivers. It's a multi-generational sport. It could be a racially diverse sport as well. That has been my goal. What contribution can I make so that I can share this space with other black women skydivers, with other Asian women skydivers, with other queer Latinx skydivers? Melanin Base Camp began on social media in 2016. We've expanded to where we're now a blog with 10 bloggers across North America. Our hashtag Melanin Base Camp has grown to where it's now been used over 50,000 times. I knew my own experience as a skydiver, as an African-American woman, and I wanted to know what was that experience like for other people, whether they hiked or climbed or did something that I've never done in my life. Oftentimes, if you are the only person who looks like you, you may not always feel empowered to talk about issues in your community or things that need to change or how can you make your community a safer, more inclusive place. So we really wanted to have these powerful but kind of scary conversations about important issues and that is something that we strive to do from the very beginning and that's something that we're continuing to do now. Hey, Fabia. How's it going? Hi, Danielle. Dr. Fabia Dubik is one of our writers at Melanin Base Camp. She's an experienced climber. She's a professional climber. I first met her at Harvard. We were both running track. She was amazing. I just knew that I really wanted her to write for us, so I reached out and was able to rekindle our friendship. 
your perspective that you've added over the years has just been invaluable. I think people love reading your articles and feeling like they can follow along with your journey. I go to the same place like two to three times a week here. It's my favorite crag. And I'll often bring male friends with me. And when there is another person at the crag, they will ask my male, usually white friend, what's the beta? How do we do it? They've never been there. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't ever ask me. I don't even exist. When I first started climbing, my community actually was very welcoming. But as I've gotten stronger, I've felt kind of less welcomed. Yeah. And there was a point the where irony. I could carry mace. White men were standing and threatening me in the gym. Intimidation. Yes. In 2016, when I was still in the military, I was diagnosed with rheumatic fever and ended up having some long-term health issues that stemmed from that diagnosis. And that was kind of my entry point into life as a disabled jumper. I've always been like a very athletic person. So to go from running and that being a part of my life to not being able to run anymore, that was really challenging for me but the skydiving community takes a lot of steps to be accessible to the disabled community. And I know, okay, we can do the same thing for other marginalized groups. I wanted to take the tent that was and is Melanin Base Camp and just make it a little bit bigger to encompass all of the other talented outdoor affinity groups that are doing important work by forming Diversify Outdoors. I felt that we would have a stronger, bolder presence within the outdoor industry. And it's creating a legacy, right, to where it's so much bigger and so much more relevant than any one individual. So what does a more equitable outdoors look like to you? I think continuing to see this exponential growth in BIPOC affinity groups, where whether you're a person of color or fat or queer or disabled, you can get outside with other people who look like you. It makes me really excited to think that Melanin Base Camp and Diversify Outdoors have played a, a large role in that. And I'm just really excited about how can we support other people. I love skydiving barefoot. It represents a couple of things. It's about rejecting very hyper-competitive skydiving culture. For me, skydiving is about giving myself permission to relax, to be in the moment, and I think being barefoot is a part of that. Then there's the other side of it, which is people tend to make assumptions about me based on the color of my skin. And usually those assumptions are incorrect. They're about my perceived ability, skill level. And when I get on the plane barefoot, it also helps people realize that she's an experienced skydiver because it's typically not something that you see. It's kind of like armor in a way. Well, as you can see, I found my way back inside, hoping the state parks bill doesn't come in too high. Having to be airlifted off the side of a remote mountain ain't as cheap as it used to be. And with that, I must bid you adieu for the season. Don't forget, y'all, your thing is out there. You just need to open your mind up to find it. And as always, don't forget to find what you love, share it with the world, and scream from the mountaintop. Your attention, please. Uh, Craig, you know what you gotta do, right? Oh, uh, improve on my ceramic skills, finally write my screenplay, and get hypnotherapy for my crippling fear of heights? Well, yeah, but no. You can't just leave the audience jamless. They want that Craig-style jam. 
They do be wanting that Craig style jam, huh? Sure enough, wouldn't be a season without it. Well, okay then. Say less, my pillar. <sighs> I don't even know how to start. How to start. Yeah. I guess I could just sing from the heart. From the heart. And express how I really feel. Okay. You got this, Craig. Okay. Time to get black, y'all. So, I feel confusion. You know, I feel delusion. Okay. And I feel lost. Really? And overall, I mean, I'm trying my heart. Tell me I'm lying, dear Lord. To get it, move to march. Talking black and stuff. Real love. Maybe I should write it. Triple check if he or she give a damn that we stuck in this position of having less than 30 days. 28 days ain't enough for me. 28 days ain't enough for C. The C is for Craig and I've had enough. We need to move to say to March. Maybe we can move to a longer month. Okay. Maybe we can have more time to stop. I'm going to get turned. I see you, girl. And use my voice. Your attention, please. Till the powers make choice. And it's an easy one to make. That's right. You can either give. And I see us getting frustrated, considering just how long we waited, and how you said yes, but then you hated. I maybe need to change approach. I can cry, 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 cry. I can't tell if that ever works. Look, at the end of the day, I just want to make it one way. Black history in a different month. My ancestors. One with more than 28 days. Sure guy. 28 days ain't enough for me. 28 days ain't enough for C. The C is for Greg and I've had enough. We need to move this thing tomorrow. <laughs> Count down 28, 27, 26. Count down. And yes, we're really doing the news. Countdown 19, 18, 17. Countdown 16, 15, 14. Countdown 13, 12, 11, 10. And yes, we are still doing this. Countdown 6, countdown 5. Days went by. 28 days ain't enough for me. 28 days ain't enough for C. The C is for Craig, and I've had enough. We need to move this thing to